welcome to everyone out there and um, everyone here. So what yeah, I'm presenting on today is two things and the first is really um, to just demystify big data and data science. Now we've all probably heard about this big data movement um, that's, that's engulfing the world, the data deluge is here and um, what's happening is this hype about big data that um, we can really tap into um, some extra value that, that the world is, is making just available through a number of different resources, through social media, um, and even now open, open access data um, repositories, and also internally in in our businesses now it's very easy to go get a hard drive and get a terabyte of data and accumulate anything you need so we're really in the big data era and um, what I want to do is this give my, my story about big data and how it fits in with the data science the first um, so what I'm, this is my presentation and I'll give you an overview of it straight away. So this is how it looks. We're going to be moving along this way, but also downwards. So I'm going to rip through these slides and um, give, first of all, yeah, that definition about what big data and data science is. And then I'm going to move into a little bit about my company, Data Scientist. And that's the second reason I'm presenting. I just moved into River City Labs and um, it's a, I've been here a week and it, the, the value I've gotten is amazing. Just, and that's just on the, the environment itself, being able to come away somewhere specific where I can work and also the, networking the, the the contacts with the people and just sort of even just sitting next to the people that I sit next to it's, I don't know it's something about the atmosphere just rubs off and makes me motivated and does extra and I get in and feel really productive so this section is really about what I'm doing and um, what also what with these presentations we want to actually uh, I really appreciate everyone coming to to listen to my story and I want to hear your story too so anyone at River City Labs who wants to present I want to then I'll talk to Steve Baxter briefly about it setting up a series where everyone just presents so I don't want yeah feedback if I can't give it back as well so please present your story and so I get the opportunity to pay back the favor of um, getting feedback on where I'm going and what, what I'm doing. So that's the overview and let's get into it. So straight up, big data and data science, what is it? Now, these definitions have come from gleaned from a number of different sources and from my experience um, working really in this space for ever since I graduated really in 2000 I, I, um, I, I've always been in this space where it's data management um, technology based trying to get the, the best of the information that's out there and the first sort of intro that I got to this space, big data and data science, came from a number of sources and one of this being this book. It's called The Fourth Paradigm, Data Intensive Scientific Discovery. It's a Microsoft um, based book edited by a number of different authors, heaps of different authors, and it, it talks about it refers to data intense, the, the data intensive science, which is now by popular demand being called big data. And it talks about 
the data scientist role in the in in the data science movement. And what it really comes down to is saying big data. So you have big data when, and and that's key. You have big data when it becomes difficult to organise, package, and deliver information. Data science. You do data science when you organise, package, and deliver information. So there's a commonality here. Organising, packaging, and delivering. Big data is a situation that you have. Data science is something you do. So let's dig into that. Well, let's dig into the commonality. So there's organised, package, and delivering information. What do we mean by that? Organising information. Organising information is what data managers, statisticians, and data analytic people do. And it covers things like storage, the formats that you're going to be putting them in, security, statistics, and general manipulation of the data. So it's all about organizing and bringing it together, where you're going to keep it, how's it going to get accessed, who's going to get it, and then you, 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 your manipulation and management um, comes in as well. Moving into packaging information. The packaging information is what computer programmers and digital artists do. It's about putting a wrapper around it. It's saying, okay, how can I make this more informative with an application or a, a web-based graph or something that you need programming skills to bring together and bring new life to the data that's been organized. So well, we talk about visualization, user experiences, adaptability, reusability, and transparency. So without these We'll talk about transparency. Without someone um, programming a linking mechanism so that you can actually drill into your data, you don't get that transparency level. Okay, it's just some numbers. But what comes with packaging is the ability to really get a deeper insight about it. Okay, I've got this number. What? Where did that number come from? Click. Boom. Here's the base raw data behind it. Oh, this is an interest section. <laughs> That's packaging. Visualization and user experiences. And it brings the, and all these features. So now we're talking about delivering information. So delivering information is what business people do. It's about sales. Now, we all, and I personally have some pre-notions about sales and what, like I don't present myself or see myself as a big salesperson, but I've, I realize that when you're presenting an application or a prototype that I might be developed, what I'm actually doing is trying to sell it sell the idea, influence others, so that they actually can get the value out of that representation. So sales requires, I know, a bit more information, uh, but I mean, it could be put in more context, but essentially, bringing it from the business world, we all do, we all do sales, no matter whether we're influencing our children to go to school, or we're pr putting forward a proposal for a, 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 um, a new IT system. And it goes hand in hand with marketing and influence and value creation. And that is really the key. Value creation. So delivering information is all about enabling value to be realized. Well, first you've got to create it, but then it, 
it's no use creating it if you don't deliver it. And it won't be realized and really be there until it is. I mean, it won't be found until it's realized. It won't be there. But, but that's, um, that, they're the elements of organizing, packaging, and delivering information. It's what we're really all about. But the whole is more than the sum of its parts. That's what we're talking about. This is when it becomes a problem. If you have a big data problem when you can't bring all these things together. You have a massive amount of data. Yet you might have it stored there, but you're not packaging it right. And you're not getting the value out. So that's when, and yes, we are seeing a wave where there's massive amounts of data and people are seeing more opportunities and it's just making the big data movement is just bringing forth this realization that everyone has a big data problem because there's so much data out there. But when you do bring these things together, and this is what people are, are saying, is this data science. This data science movement, being a data scientist, it's really the essence of being able and willing to organize the data, go down and see, okay, where is it going to be stored? It's, what formats is it in? Being able to program and do the visualization. It's not saying you have to take over and do it all yourself, but just being that interface into, into the parties or teams that are involved. And then, okay, involved in the visualization, involved in the programming, and definitely involved in delivery, because that's where the value is created. So that's what is bringing forth this data science. So, now I want to talk about data science, the data science PPYLP story. And I put out the hero's journey in the making there, and I've I felt a bit awkward about doing that, but my point really I wanted to put on this is that, um, well, one of the aspects that's coming forth in the data scientist role is that you have to be a good storyteller. And it all comes down to the delivery. And I think that's one of the main aspects that people overlook because it hasn't been traditionally the role of a programmer or a statistician or a, or a data manager. And, the, and there's this culture difference coming up for where, okay, um, okay, you can be a data scientist, but we still won't tell you what our true value propositions are. But the way I get around that is to really to have a story and be a good storyteller and sell what you're doing to the people that you need to sell it to. The hero's journey is a is a, a framework that um, was developed. I can't remember the the author of the book, but it, there is a book called The Hero's Journey, and it talks about this framework that um, many Hollywood movies have picked up and taken and run with. And it's all about okay, I'm in this situation. It's pretty mundane, but then something happens. I want to go forth and see that yes, I want to take on this challenge. And then you have hardship and it's, and you get down there and you're in the, in the, in the trenches. But then you find the magic, um, talisman and something of a shield and it gets you out there and then you have more challenges and, and, and then you get out in the end and you come back home and you share the, um, experiences with everything, um, in the, in the, in the, uh, normal world. That story, that framework has been used for, for uh, movies like Star Wars, 
um, avatar. It's numerous the number of um, movies that use the hero's journey framework. And this is what, as a data scientist, you can sort of bring in to, to get over those humps into, um, okay, yes, we need to give that value propositions. So, for me, now, I've, I have made this quite specific for me, but, and I know a lot of people have had these similar problems, and, and, um, but I couldn't really, I didn't feel comfortable talking about it generally. I'm still talking about it for me. So, it really has been a, a long road, and, um, however, there has been some really good lessons learned. So, I, really came out like most people do and I hit the job market. So I became a job, a, a programmer and a scientific um, programmer, data manager. And um, the work I was doing, it sort of sparked up some interest outside my employment. So other people started asking me, well, you know, sitting next to a researcher and, and uh, being the interface into technology and data, that sounds like something we could really use. So I went down this consulting market and, um, yeah, started consulting in this space, but it was still unknown what data science was. Um, it wasn't until two, 2008, um, I've been working in the industry for eight years, that someone came up to me, I was at a, an e-research conference, and they said, like, typical question, they said, okay, what do you do? And I said, well, yeah, I, I um, sit next to these academic research professors, and I'm the interface into technology, and I help them uh, access the data and, and, and do whatever they need to get the value out of the technology and data that's out there. And this guy said, um, well, you know what, over in the States, we have a name for you. You you guys, we call you data scientists. And I thought, that's amazing, that is great. And that's how the data science industry found me. So then I moved in to the data science space. The people I was serving, I just said, you know, um, actually what I do is data science. They didn't care because I was still doing the same thing. The lessons learnt. Now, it's this really what um, I'll list them all out. There's five, five major lessons that I feel is important in order to take on the data scientist role. And I'll briefly talk about, which I don't have my timekeeping system going yet, but I'll get that there. So, embracing change, it's all about being agile. The world is changing so rapidly that um, it's hard to keep up. And, it, and I've fought for this for so long, and I really, really found a new level when I said, yep, things are going to change, so how can I bring that into everything I do? And it's all about being lean, so lean startups, lean methodology. It's, it's about yeah, being agile in programming, and it's being about finding out your value right now. What's, what is the value proposition right now? And not looking too, you can, yeah, definitely looking have goals in the future, but embrace them and, and don't get upset if they change. The next level is learning to love learning. And in this space, if you learn, love, learn to love learning, you will be a data scientist because there's so much out there to learn in the technology. You will just be doing it. Creating transparently is really about showing everything and 
um, we've got movements like uh, open source software, um, even o open data, um, sharing everything about okay what you do, and it takes extra time to do it transparently, and you don't get the value straight away, but it does come because it moves to the second, the next point, which is you serve to inspire. So, serving to inspire means that, okay, we want to do something. I'm going to do it to really serve someone else in achieving what they want to achieve in a way that it really inspires them. And it doesn't matter. It can be getting, um, I was at a restaurant the other day and someone came out and asked, what I'd like. I just ordered a water. But the way they brought it out and the way they asked, I, I was inspired by they just were so in their place with what they did. And it was something as simple as getting a glass of water. And teaching for action transformation is giving people something to do, helping those behind you who haven't been down the path, showing the path that I've, we've come, and giving them the lessons if they want to know for free. So it brings me to where I am now. Oops. Yeah. So in this present moment, the, there's so many people out there externally. People are just waiting for solutions, or wanting solutions, not waiting, yeah, wanting solutions. And internally, for this is my situation, in terms of the data scientist company, I've lots of people just saying, you know, I've got this problem. I need a solution. I need, I need this, 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 something's going wrong or I need to get ahead. But internally, I've got a whole heap of people just wanting to create and innovate. And they are embracing those data science traits. But it really, yeah, it's still, okay, I went into this bit earlier, but I'll go into it externally. So yeah, externally, this is what's happening in the world. Data scientists are being called the rock starters of the big data era. That comes from the last data scientist summit uh, last year. And um, this was from a McKenzie report saying that um, there's going to be job shortages in this space. Internally, like I said, how do I deliver the people and the solutions to the demand? Or how do we? Um, and the people are talking to, yeah, we don't know. But we're, we're just going to have fun trying. And that's the space I'm in right now. Now, this is why I'm here in, in, at the um, River City Labs. Explore and have fun trying to find new ways to do deliver people to the solutions in the demand. And already in the first week, I've had so much direction, so much insight, so much great advice on how to do it. And, and I'm going to share now our first attempt, what we're going to be doing. The first attempt is going to be an interactive learning workshop that will train people on how to apply the data science problem solving framework to the actual situation right now and get immediate results.
it's going to be called the Intensive Data Insight Workshop. So your data has something to tell you. It's going to, okay, be two days. Day one, we're going to really discover the position and work out, well, first of all, we want to make sure everyone's on the same page. They understand what data, big data is and what data science is. So we'll be, yeah, um, giving some intros into that will be then identifying their data position and their data science position. And the mechanisms, oops, where I want to plug this book, the business model generation was introduced to me, I think the day after I arrived and at River City Labs. And it has just been a great influence and um, inspiration to me that I, I want to incorporate the, the business model canvas into this. So how do you get the position? You do a business model canvas and you ask what are your value propositions? Who are your customer segments? Where um, who are your partners and how are you going to tap into the channels? How are you going to build the relationships? So that's um, where we're going to head with identifying their data, big data position in data science. Break for lunch and then we get into planning. So I actually um, have more points. In the first hour, we're going to be getting people ready to make a difference. We'll be analyzing their position. In the second hour, uh, yeah, that's, so that's still identifying their position. After lunch, we get into the planning aspect. How do you get ready to play big, to play with big data? How do you plan to stay and embrace change and involve continually? How do you bring it all together? Ensure, ensure that you have what it takes to, to keep it going. And we're just going to work through those um, those questions and come up with a plan. In the sixth hour, we're going to start talking about what we have to bring it all together. So the resources available internally and the resources available externally. Then we give a little overview of how to make it work. And we've got a data science problem solving framework, which is really a modernized problem solving framework. So it's all about how to get from point A to point B, but it's taking into consideration that the world has changed. We have massive amounts of data out there. We have massive amounts of technology available to us. So this is really the plan to success. How do you get from A to B and incorporate the technology and data that's available out there? We use the data science problem solving framework. Then we break and then we recap for the first day. By this time we have a vision of where we want to be. We know we have a plan on how to get there and we'll have a future-proof solution that people can run with right now, right then.
The second day, we want to talk about the value influences and really ensure that they have established what they need to keep the value there. So it's, this section is really about setting up and training others so that internally they have the resources um, that they feel they need to, to run with this and to keep it going. Because yes, like I said at the beginning, big data is something you have. Data science is something you do. So if you have big data and you want to do something about it, you need to ensure you continually do that because otherwise the big data situations will keep popping up. So in this day two of the workshop we want to deliver and um, ensure that the processes are in place. We want to give examples of in their situation in that environment what maybe other people would be doing in, in big data and data science. Okay. And we'll talk a bit about collaborations internally and externally and we go into extracting and creating value and bringing it all together. The first balance we really bring out in that context of who we're serving, what is some real stories or case studies out there? What are other people doing? How do they do it? What and learn from um, what's already been done. In the second hour, we start talking about collaboration. And this, I psychology out there because what I was talking about early uh, about okay traditional data scientists you know, that come from a number of different aspects and for from my experience it's getting over the psychology of being a sales person selling the value being that um, person that can yet yeah, I can do the programming and I can do the data management but I can't deliver the value until I know where you're at and there's a psychology on that it's about interacting with people it's about listening and building rapport so that whoever we go to we have that and they feel comfortable telling us the true direction and whether because that's when we get true value when they tell us what they want to do where they want to be and we're not just there to develop or introduce a new IT system and we talk about okay internally how would they establish their data science dream team so I'm going to Las Vegas next week at the Data Science Summit and that's a concept um, that they're presenting on how to build data science dream team and um, yeah it's all it's really about just identifying those internal people I'll have more information when I get back from Las Vegas but it's about identifying that those who are critical for the success of this big data and data science plans that we're coming up for and then Motivation is everything. It's about sustaining, sustaining the plan. Then we want to take it externally. Okay, we want to know 
at all the different levels who are the users. Who are the external users? What experiences are they going to get? Um, it's a process, identifying the people, the experience, and also again touching on this influence. What are the influential forces driving users and how these forces will be maintained? Quick break for lunch on the second day. And then we start digging into value. First of all, we want the company or the person we're serving to extract the value, to feel that value come from what the, the effort they put in, in order to make it all worthwhile. And we want to have methods for doing that. We got to understand how we can do that. And then we need to measure it, because if we don't measure it, people are going to forget. And no matter, from my experience, no matter how much you tell them and say, you know, this is the reason, this, until it's written down in a report or even just a piece of paper, it gets forgotten so quickly. And it's been one of my major frustrations coming through this space is that people forget so quickly about the value that has been gained. And it only takes one small thing to go wrong when you're back down at level one. So then we want to talk about maintenance again, maintenance and growth. For internal uh, in extraction, for them, how are they going to keep extracting this value and maintaining it? Then we talk about creation, value creation. And this is then pushing the value creation out to others. And it's about inspiring and sharing and transparency of what we're doing. And once we create that value, it's the same aspect that I was talking about before. It's, it's not going to be really value until someone realizes it. And that's what we talk about up there at the first step. Then we talk about innovation and um, continuing to be innovative, what it means to be innovative. How can you maintain in this environment that is on continual change and um, it all comes down to being innovative. Again, maintaining and sharing, keeping it up. The last hour is all just bringing it together. Give them a vision. This is the vision you came up with. This is the plan. People you're going to need, the resources, even technology the value that we've identified and we're going for and then the now right then and then and now right what's their position what's their vision what's their data science path how are they going to get there So, this is my last slide for the future. This is what drives me, what gets me up in the morning. I really just, yeah, want to make a difference in the world. And the potential, yeah, is there. And 
like we've come through. There's, I can see lots of people with this desire and lots of really smart people, really innovative, just going around here at River City Labs. There's, everyone I talk to is just really smart, really technology savvy, really wanting to apply it and make a difference, a positive difference in the world. And my my way forth is through the data science um, aspect, and um, I'm going to do what I can to make make a difference and be a role model for those others that want to come that way, and really for my children as well. And so the big picture stuff when. Okay, well, I don't want to move too far ahead of myself with what we're moving towards. Okay, we've got to get these, or train and try these workshops and see how they go. But what I'm moving towards in the big picture stuff is sort of an, an academy, an association of data scientists with an independent body that can say, yes, this is the data science um, job. This is what a data scientist does. And these are the ethics and the and the things you need to apply and make it and share it. So let's begin. And um, yeah, thanks everyone out there for listening. And uh, I'll end the transmission there. And thank everyone for coming.